Hello everyone and welcome to yet another PTC Nordic Talks webinar where we are honored today by having Joss Westerkamp from Autos for a session on a success story that Autos have with Takeda on mixed reality work instructions. But first, as always, a quick introduction about myself. And my name is Torbjörn Peterson, and I'm the Alliance Manager for PTC in the Nordics. And we are running all these weekly webinars on Fridays at the same time. We also invite customers and partners for some inspiration on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And all the past webinars have also been recorded and are to be found on the registration site. The agenda for today is first a very quick overview of PTC by my colleague Carl from the customer success team. And then Jos will start by introducing himself, touch base on a few challenges he has seen, how to address these, and then explain some of the business outcomes from the case. And at the end, we are also having a Q&A session, so please keep your questions to the end. So over to you, Carl. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so PTC is an international software company with headquarter base in Boston. We are developing software mainly for manufacturing companies since 1985. We offer tools for the digital transformation, such as CAD for design, PLM for man man managing data, IoT for connecting products or manufacturing operations, and augmented reality to visualize and interact with the digital thread. To you, Jos. Yeah, thank you, Carl. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. thank you all for, for listening in. Uh, I'm Jos Westerkamp, and today we're going to talk about uh, Takeda. Uh, a client of Atos and about the way we have uh, organized and, and, and transformed their uh, standard operation procedure within their uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing site and uh, increased their uh, productivity and decreased their downtime. So um, a little bit about myself, uh, I'm, I'm working for the last six years in uh, augmented reality, uh, I, I formerly employed by MPTC. And then at, at PTC, I was leading the, the business development for bespoke solutions. And at Atos, I'm uh, yeah, in about the same role, uh, being the, the pinpoint between uh, sales and, and the technology team to create um, yeah, value-driven augmented reality solutions and uh, yeah, spread them out into the world, um, and like, like today. So uh, what we really aim for is a serious application with, with, with a, yeah, a really good value. Um, yeah, of course, with augmented reality, you can do certain things that no other technology can. And uh, also Takeda was one of these clients that saw a potential in this. Um, for those who don't know Takeda, it's, it's one of the largest pharmaceuticals in the world uh, with about uh, 30 billion uh, revenue. And uh, they have uh, a manufacturing site in Belgium. About Atos, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to say uh, you can the website explains it best is what we're doing, uh, but um, so you, you can go over to atos.com, but uh, atos.net, sorry. Uh, but in general, how we are like an application management services consultancy, um, and we we offer digital transformation. We are one of the largest in cloud. We're one of the largest in the world on, on security services. And we have, um, as you saw in the beginning in the purple slide, we do have an uh, immersive team. Um, it's, it's grown rapidly and we are um, yeah, uh, train, creating all kinds of uh, immersive applications. So not only AR, but also VR and 3D digital twin um, yeah, applications to, uh, to, to help clients. Um, so yeah, the, today's focus will be on Takeda and the challenge of Takeda, right? Uh, let's dive right in. Um, as said before, it's a pharmaceutical uh, company that is having a, a, a whole manufacturing site in, in, in Belgium. And I think we're immediately the power of AR comes in because the, the process of packaging such uh, these medicine is, is highly complex. Uh, we, we, we saw that um, to, to especially if, if a machine has to be reset to do a different kind of packaging so it has to be recalibrated um, it, it takes quite a long time and the, the, the operator has to go alongside 16 points and on every point he has to um, yeah, insert a new value often a two or three digit uh, number and yeah you can already uh, imagine that this is a, a false sensitive approach um, and yeah, if, if, if a mistake is happening, then you, yeah, you, you know it once you see the badge coming out and you see it's wrongly packaged, which has a, conf uh, with this, uh, as a, as a yeah, uh, I think in a, a huge effect on, uh, on the, on, on the product productivity and, 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 and the, 
and the revenue of that day of production. So it, it, it's a process of, of rigor and precision and can only be done by, uh, by uh, well-trained employees, which like many of the companies in the world nowadays have a, have a shortage of. So there were, in general, uh, to, 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 to paint a picture for you guys, uh, it, 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 there's a quite a, a, a process with, with, with pressure um, that yeah, you, you're all probably familiar with. Um, so we, I think already thanks to PTC, that Takeda was already known about hey, what is what are the things that AR can do, uh, but they didn't have like the exact match on between technology and the use case. Hey, they did solve this problem, but they, they, there wasn't a, a direct fit. Um, so that's why uh, we came in as Atos as a, a system integrator. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, program for these kinds of um, AR projects, which we like to call the CX Immersive Accelerator. Uh, where we, we sit with a cross-functional team uh, from their side, of course, and their process owners, and from our side, uh, IT, um, immersive consultants and, and developers and designers. So uh, after that, uh, we, we, we like to uh, work in an agile way where we, we start with mock-ups, small demos uh, to eventually really touch the right spot uh, and, and, and build it out into an MVP, a minimal viable product. And yeah, this was a working project project already, not with the exact data in place, but it did have the, 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 the look and feel and it was already possible to, yeah, to, to have an experience on top of a machine. And this was uh, after some, uh, some feedback, it was uh, constantly updated have, and, and, and yeah, and got finally into a rollout. A process uh, like this is normally about uh, two weeks of, of requirements gathering uh, and then we you build up of, 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 of a sprint where you really build the application collect feedback again um, the, and this year you're doing it a couple of times uh, at, and eventually you have it really uh, yeah, uh, deployment proof and it's uh, solid it works uh, works also without uh, Atos uh, close by and then it's uh, eligible for rollout so Let's dive in because now we know the, the, the needs, we know the process, but what was actually application about? Well, here you already see it right away. Uh, on the left, you see the old process. On the right, you see the new process. Uh, on the left, you see all these paper documents um, where, uh, where we just saw the packaging machine and then you have to walk around with all these paper documents and then you had to yeah, uh, find yourself the way on where you need to be and then you have to look on the document with all the information at once uh, to see uh, what kind of value you need, you need to put in. So right here, as, as I think uh, it's, it's mentioned uh, all, all, a lot by, by, by the PTC marketing team as well, right? Uh, with AR, you, you, you get the right information at the right time. Um, so not all information at once. Uh, you also don't need it to learn up front. Uh, but you are just getting the right information um, where we use the HoloLens. So it's also hands free and you get this locational guidance. And yeah, the results were like um, undoubtedly uh, better uh, with uh, ramp up was quicker and with a lot less errors and, and eventually the cost of non-quality. So uh, the, uh, in, in a second, I will show you the video, but just the video is going rather quickly. So I, I made a bit of a a couple of uh, moments of the um, of, of the application, right? This is uh, on a day-to-day on -day basis. Uh, the, the workers of Takeda walk like that. Uh, they they enter in their code to unlock the, the application. And once they have unlocked the, uh, the application, they are uh, they are scanning in uh, the view mark to to know where they need to be. Or the, to, to say, okay, I'm, I'm standing in front of this machine. And then the next step is, so they know the machine, then the next step is, okay, they need to have the work order yeah, because the new packaging for a new medicine has to be made. So it has to be connected to the work order. Uh, we did that with a barcode scanner uh, with the HoloLens is scanning that the data matrix. So now the HoloLens knows yeah, what is the procedure uh, that needs to be uh, shown um, because yeah, the procedure uh, or the packaging uh, determines the procedure and the values. And from there on out, it's it's actually it becomes uh, the, the right information right in front of you. Um, 
So you have these, these few marks on top of the machine. And these machines hey, with the breadcrumb show you exactly where you need to be. So in this case, hey, you follow that breadcrumb and um, you go to the right uh, number. So in this case, hey, you, you, you see uh, it's, it's A and there you fill in uh, the, eight, the 184. And then if, you, uh, if you've done it correctly, hey, you go to the next one. If there is a mistake, so uh, maybe some something um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not correct and it, it can happen. There was also an option that we can say, oh, by the way, uh, I want to provide feedback uh, because according to my experience, uh, this is, isn't the right value we need to put in here. Uh, so it is, it's not only one way, but there's really the, the option to, to provide uh, feedback and immediately that is being uploaded to, to, the, to the main, uh, uh, to the main uh, operator room. And yeah, from there on out, you, you are guided again. So uh, let's, let's show this video so you, you have a better understanding of what it is about. Right, so I hope now this image is much more, uh, it's, it's, it's clear. Uh, it used to be a, a paper, uh, pa paper based all information at once, no locational guidance kind of process uh, where a mistake is easily made. Uh, I think you saw in the video uh, where you need to insert the value. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, a search if you uh, aren't trained. Um, and then it's also easy to make a mistake because you look, uh, on the one hand, you look to the document, then you look back to the machine. And then you look back to the document and back to the machine. It's constantly a shift in attention and yeah, a mistake is easily made. But with AR, you can hey, remain your have, have, remaining your focus uh, on, on the machine. Um, and then yeah, you get the information and, yeah, in your line of sight, which yeah, makes it uh, much easier, understandable. And then with the breadcrumb, uh, the video we, we just saw was only an arrow. Yeah, but we already improved it that you, you you can follow a line to the next point and um, yeah this is uh, something uh, Takeda is really happy with uh, as we are now yeah, it's now already rolled out to multiple machines and uh, yeah that's also coming to uh, the, one of the final slides already and uh, what's next uh, of course uh, expansion and uh, more machine um, uh, multiple users um, and yeah, of course, an investigation to uh, new AR use cases. Uh, one of these uh, things uh, I think is, is really interesting is to also show, uh, as this uh, yeah, demo video shows, uh, IoT data on top of machines. Uh, to also, oh, sorry, also to um, yeah, increase uh, situational awareness within a manufacturing site. Um, yeah, so um, I think... Um, this offers, I think, a, a good understanding about what we did for Takeda. And um, these are some stolen moments. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for your attention. And um, I um, also think maybe if you are more interested in this uh, topic, um, I, uh, I can reach out to you. So let me know in the comments or uh, or via email. This is my email. If you want to uh, to have uh, yeah some some insights in uh, an extra information on maybe we can help you in the process, then uh, yeah, me and my team are more than happy to to yeah to to offer a free consult, so to say. And uh, yeah, perhaps we can uh, work together. So um, yeah.
yeah, again, thank you for your attention and uh, Carl and Toby Oren, thank you uh, for the invite and uh, looking forward uh, for the questions. Thanks a lot, Jos, for sharing all your uh, great uh, updates here regarding this interesting case with Takeda. So, yeah, as I said, I mean, over to you in the audience and any questions you might have. I guess and hope we have a few questions actually coming up here. At least I have one first question. So could you elaborate a little bit on, I mean, what's been the P2C solution used in this specific case? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we used um, the, the Vumarks in, in combination with uh, Vivoria Engine. Um, yeah, we we uh, we we uh, I think uh, PTC overall has has great solutions, but um, yeah, for this one we we yeah we we saw a, a, a fit for for engine the most. Um, so yeah, we used a Fivori engine in in combination uh, with with the Vumark tracking, and that is uh, yeah, and then on top of that, Atos builds yeah a bit of a UI to fill in new values. For a new machine and that whole connection to the to the yeah the the mass uh, machine uh, manufacturing data, so it's yeah it's a combination um, and of course yeah we use the Hololens so there's also uh, we we leverage the the capabilities of uh, of Microsoft as well. Yes, we have a few questions from the audience here. I mean the first one is from Mark and. Uh, and he has a question regarding the battery life of the Hololens. If you had any kind of issues with that or. Yeah, I think that's a good question. And the overall team, I think you can can pull it a bit wider. Is that you? Um, it's about the the hardware itself. It's about the battery life. It's about uh, that you, that you need an owner of the Hololens uh, because otherwise it's 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 somewhere in the corner and and people don't charge it and uh, people don't clean it. So now now it's important to have that. Yeah, maybe a big word change management to have in place as well. But you do need a procedure for that. And yeah, we worked with with Takeda, and uh, as they were involved from the start in in this application, we we also covered that yeah, that there needs to be an owner of the device. That that and and yeah, it is is a daily task for for a person to to yeah to make sure the the Hololens device, yeah, which is um, yeah, it's 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 not fragile, but it it does um, yeah needs care. And and I think one of these points is indeed charging it. And no, it's uh, if if you charge it uh, on a daily basis, it's 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 good to go. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I think it's important if you have a, a device like this installed, you do need to have an owner uh, who also can train new people uh, because it of course uh, requires a, a special interaction. It's not a tablet, but you you are pointing in the air, uh, and it has a certain uh, experience, and you need to yeah you need to get trained on, and 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 it needs to have an owner within uh, the manufacturing site. Thanks. We have one uh, also question from Anders. Uh, why not before your expert capture? Yeah, um, that's that's a good question. Um, what we saw was that um, yeah, this this was made um, with, with, because we. Yeah, yeah, with expert capture, you get also an whole authoring tool. You get like. Um, a lot of great functionality, but for this one, we we yeah we could trim it down and make it uh, more simple. Uh, and we uh, as you, uh, we you don't have to show videos, you don't have to show uh, uh, yeah to do lists, etc. But you only need like a small value directly pulled in from uh, from the manufacturing system. So yeah, we uh, yeah we we aim to make it as efficient as we could. Uh, yeah, and that's why we used. Um, yeah, in this case, uh, a bespoke solution uh, from from Atos in, in combination with with the platform of uh, Vivoria Engine. But uh, yeah, uh, reconsidering, I think um, expert capture is, is is maybe also an option. Um, but yeah, we we saw this as yeah the, the the quickest way to go to value in in this particular use case. Right. Good. Thanks. And another question from Stephen: uh, Have you seen the need for Audio in any applications or uh, audio? Um, yeah, that 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 is a way. Yeah. By the way, you can also talk to the Hololens and say yeah, next step, etc. Um, and there's yeah, it it, it potentially it could could also be uh, that you that 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 the, and then I think that the idea is to have like voice saying to you the value. 
um, yeah, this 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 could be an, an extra layer on top. Um, yeah, these, uh, it ca it can be the case that it, that the manufacturing side is a bit uh, noisy, so that's something we, then you have to consider. But um, no, it's it's something yeah that 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 could that could help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And also another question from Graham, uh, and that is re related I mean, to any kind of feedback you might have had. I mean, from customers or I mean, users of Hololens. Have you had any feedback so far? Or? Um, yeah, in, in in general, the the the, the Hololens is um, yeah, it's for a lot of people still a new device, uh, and it is also um, yeah sometimes the the tracking is a bit off, so it it, it does has its challenges. So therefore, it's always really important to also, if you are in this, if 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 I showed, uh, I can go back to the process, um, right? This is vision and requirements. In this stage, we we don't start with, oh, we want to have a HoloLens. Uh, we start with, uh, with the with the use case, with with the problems the client has, and then, uh, I, I'm also always advocate for, hey, also try, uh, how does it work on. Uh, on a real wear a glass, so an assisted reality glass. Or how does it work on a on, on a phone <clears throat> or a tablet? And and then you 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 if if you try all these these hardware, uh, you also then can make an um, yeah uh, make a decision on uh, what's important. Eh? What is 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 being hands free the most important, or is it? Um, yeah, is it maybe that isn't uh, so important? Then, then, then there's always uh, then there's a, yeah uh, an option to 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 go for your phone, which is of course, hey, yeah, everybody has a phone and is already using it for the last 20 years, so it, that's much more intuitive. But uh, yeah, in the in the case of Takeda, it was that hands-free uh, that made it uh, yeah that that was really a determining factor, uh, because you do need your hands to to uh, adjust the machine. Um, and with your phone, yeah, it, 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 that, that's yeah. You have to lay lay it down the whole time, and then the tracking maybe has to need has to be readjusted. So, yeah. The, the, hopefully, hopefully that's an answer to your question. Uh, <laughs> Good one. And uh, we have another question also from Kamal, and uh, his question is: I mean, uh, can the same experience be uh, created on before you instruct using model targets? Uh, that's a good one. Um, and um, and that's really dependent on uh, if model targets are then the, the good way of tracking. Um, uh, these machines are uh, then in order for model tracking, uh, you do need to have the uh, the contour available. So you need the cat, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, which at which is often that the Takeda machines aren't the Takeda, aren't owned by Takeda, but are, are are coming from a machine builder. So it's it's also that extra step. Um, and then sometimes yeah, machines can uh, you have two similar machines, and then also the 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 yeah the model tracking is isn't enough. You do you do you then yeah you then also need a unique identifier like like a ViewMark for example. So it's um, now. I, I think you can leverage maybe the the UI and the interface and the authoring tool of Instruct, uh, but model tracking, I'm I'm not 100% sure of. Mm. Right, right. Uh, I have another question also, and I think I mean that might be quite interesting. I mean, have you uh, tracked any kind of I mean return of investments so far, or I mean using your I mean, solution here, or? Yeah, we we currently are are measuring that to to get like really a, a solid answer to that. So. Unfortunately, yeah, also as I said in the beginning, I'm also a big promoter of AR and I and Takeda is really excited about this application. Uh, so we, had, we, we are standing together on events. So the 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 yeah, the intangible results are there because they, they do really see a, a business benefit and they but they we haven't quantified it yet, unfortunately, because I, I would be the first to say it is uh, a double digit um, yeah, um, improvement. But at the moment we we don't have this this these numbers yet. Uh, yeah, but it, it's safe to say that it, it has a double digit uh, improvement. But we don't know the the actual uh, exact numbers so far. But it's um, yeah, it's uh, with, with excitement of the client and and the roadmap we have ring and the energy. Uh, now it's uh, um, now it's 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 a profound uh, result. Mm. 
Thank you. Uh, from your perspective, I mean, what, what do you see like I mean being the most common I mean uh, use cases by using I mean augmented reality in the industry? Um, yeah, I think in, in general there, I think AR you can yeah divide I think in three big sections. And that's the one of, of of improving the working, improving learning, and improving buying. Well, buying is uh, of course when you can show the the product in front of a client in a much more exciting way. I think this is still I think really interesting at trade shows. Yeah, for example, where you where a square space, square meters, really expensive, and yeah, you can show all these products digitally in front of you. Uh, that's one I think is really exciting. Um, if you use that same vision of showing 3D in front of you, you can also have more detailed information and then you can learn uh, people in a much more exciting way. Uh, I recall in the past we did something for Lamborghini where you could stand in front of a car and you see all the internal wiring and etc. and you, you could tap on points of interest. Uh, and that nowadays I think learning gets much more emphasized because it's um, you have a shortage of, 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 of now employees. So the ones you have, you want to have as as equipped as possible. So uh, learning is a really important team. And I think, and then and the last one uh, with productivity within the factory floor, within the shop floor, uh, um, it, you have like uh, yeah, you can digitally overlay information. So uh, the work instructions, as we're doing for Takeda, uh, but also uh, I think a really exciting one is. Um, yeah, with with inspection, yeah, with with your your computer is is uh, with computer vision trained to see um, yeah, mistakes that are made in within the in the product. So that end of line inspection, which uh, instructs can do. Um, yeah, th these are also I think really interesting use cases. Um, but yeah, the the ones I, I just told you, every every of these three bigger themes has has a different business owner, uh, and 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 they have their own vision on on what it. What they should invest in as as a next step, but I think, yeah, um, AR really has has a place and and has should certainly be investigated uh, with partners like like Atos, for example, uh, to, to to really do uh, in in a cost effective cost effective way, try to find uh, may, and maybe you find out after an MVP that that is not uh, worth the investment, but at least you have tried it and you, and then you know it, but because the upside would be much bigger that you tried it and you see, oh, this has a great effect. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, uh, yeah, organizations should, should go, yeah, uh, go in that innovation mode and, and, and just try and, and, and make small investment to see if it works, because if it works and uh, we see it today at Takeda, it's, 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 it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, I had one last question actually. I mean, how do you see that? I mean, like, I mean, metaverse and spatial computing will impact, I mean, the the, the industry going forward? Uh, yeah, uh, ooh, that's 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 uh, I can talk a, a long time about it. I think um, when I was still working at Pet PC, that, that the metaverse wasn't an, uh, wasn't an, wasn't a concept. I, when I moved to Atos, we the metaverse came in. And people are start to wondering: Is it is it the place where we can go to? Uh, I think some people still believe it's it's a virtual reality world, uh, like uh, Roblox or uh, Decentraland, etc., or the, the the digital meetings where we can all be an avatar. I think that that whole vision, uh, if you uh, if you are reading the the interviews with big CEOs of PTC, but also of uh, Nvidia and uh, all the other large companies within this industry yeah i think they they are seeing the metaverse as the transition from 2d to 3d mm. so it's no longer flat information yeah? uh, it's no longer um text and and videos it's more information uh, yeah that you see in 3d and yeah, for example we currently are digit we we are virtualizing digitizing all the the assets of um, a nationwide player in in real way so they don't go to trains anymore to train, but they, they can interact with a train in 3D and they can interact with a 3D assets like uh, electricity houses or uh, like a game. So I think that is much more the, the translation to, to the metaverse on the, on the one hand. So you can interact with 3D, uh, which is, I think, one split yeah, part of the area. And then your other part of the area is, of course, uh, yeah, the more 
um, augmented reality. So it's uh, 3D in the physical environment. Um, I like the example we showed today uh, with, the, with the Kira, but also um, yeah, with, with the whole, yeah, you have like uh, so much uh, use cases for AR uh, from selling, designing and uh, manufacturing and all has to do with showing 3D in front of you um, with a link to the to the environment. So yeah, if if yeah, if you want to talk more about it, I, I'm happy to discuss. We have many uh, use cases already, uh, what we call AR, VR, 3D. But yeah, the overall team could be uh, metaverse, so to say. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to uh, uh, to go in a in a, in a consultancy uh, role and and help a company in that aspect. Thank you. Also, I think I mean we need I mean to arrange with a separate uh, session on metaverse with you coming up here. So that will be interesting. And time is unfortunately running out. So many thanks everyone for joining and a special thanks of course I mean to you, Jos. So with that, I wish you all a fantastic weekend and hope to see you also next week. Bye bye so far. <laughs>